I found myself in a place I'd swore I'd never find myself again. It was New Year's Eve, and while my friends were out in Times Square watching the ball drop, I was cooling my head against the wall of a jail cell. The night had started out fine. We had a plan to hit a few of our favorite bars on the way to the big party. We got to the third on the list, and I hadn't gotten into any of the hard stuff yet, so I was only buzzed. Unfortunately, that was enough to open the cage of my primal nature when some stoned loser made a pass at my fiancé. I hit the guy square in the jaw and his eyes rolled back. My friend Riley caught him before he hit the floor, and he was okay, but everyone in the crowded bar saw what happened. I barely had time to register what I'd done before I was being cuffed and loaded into the stale backseat of a police cruiser. As is usually the case on New Year's Eve, the jail was pretty well occupied by quarter to midnight. Considering my violent offense, I was kept in my own cell for as long as the staff could let me be. I could tell the jailer who brought in my first cellmate was glad to see I had sobered up, but he gave me a stern warning anyway. What'd you do? I asked the ragged man the jailer brought in. He stood with his back to me, watching the jailer walk away. When the sound of heavy boots on echoing concrete faded, he finally faced me. Mangy hair framed his weathered, pockmarked face. He had a scar under one eye, and a bare patch in his thick beard implied the existence of another near his chin. So, I repeated my question, what did you do? The man didn't look ashamed or embarrassed. He didn't look angry or annoyed at me either. He looked like, well, he didn't really show any emotion at all. His eyes looked into mine, but they were seeing something in another dimension. I figured he was high. Look, man, there's nothing to do in here. We might as well make the most of it and get to know each other, I prompted. A childish grin broke out behind his beard. He flashed his crooked, yellow teeth as he finally spoke. There is something we can do. We can have some real fun. I was bored enough to be curious, but something about the way he said the word fun made me hesitate to respond. I eyed him carefully, sizing him up. Deciding I could probably overpower him if he tried anything, I said, all right, what do you have in mind? In a fraction of a second, the man dug his fingernail into one of his forearms and began whispering in a language I'd never heard as he squeezed. He quickly drew blood, and I shuffled back a few feet. I opened my mouth to tell him to stop, but his eyes flicked back to me. His gaze was piercing, and his giddy smile turned my stomach. My apprehension turned to fear. This man was insane. He lifted his bleeding forearm to his mouth and audibly took one long suck. That was the final straw for me. I called out for a guard, failing miserably to disguise my terror. The man put his arms upward as if he were reaching for something on the ceiling. I could see where the blood had been smeared across his lips and beard. He continued to whisper quickly and quietly. What's going on? A guard asked through the door. Then everything went black. With a loud pop, every light in the building went out. The red emergency lights flickered on for a moment before they too gave into the darkness. Another arrestee screamed in their cell down the hall. I heard running footsteps and squeaking boots as the guards scrambled and shouted to each other. I felt for a wall and followed it to a corner. There, I made myself as small as I could and hoped the crazy man couldn't see me in the dark either. A low boom reverberated through the jail and everyone grew quiet. The boots stopped moving and all I could hear was my own quick breath. Another boom echoed through the hall, accompanied by a different sound. It was the dragging scrape of something heavy and made of metal. As it dragged, it clinked. Chains, maybe? As a third boom rattled the door of our cell, I heard the man with me start laughing maniacally. My heart nearly stopped as I realized he was standing directly over me. I lashed out with a kick and felt it connect. There was a dull crack and the man screamed with a mixture of pain and ecstasy. I'll never forget the pure insanity in his voice. The cell door burst open and I braced myself for whatever dark force was about to enter. Then the light returned. I was hoisted to my feet by two burly guards who dragged me towards the door. Another man ran in to kneel over my cellmate who was laying sprawled out on the ground apparently unconscious. I begged and pleaded with the guards to understand. 
I tried to tell them that the other man had caused the darkness and tried to attack me, but they weren't listening to a word I said. As they dragged me out, I caught one more glimpse of the man's face. His eyes were open. He didn't appear unconscious at all. He was still smiling. The door swung shut as we passed through, and the lock clicked. A blood-curdling scream of pain and terror rang out from the cell. The guards dropped me and ran back to the door. When they opened it, the wild man burst past them, knocking one over. He ran down the hall and disappeared. The next morning, after my fiancé bailed me out, I saw the headline. Deranged man escapes from cell. He made it out. The man and whatever evil he conjured that night are walking among us. <laughs>